the relationship between the Communist and the Central Kerbin Alliance network is very tense. Kerbin is on the brink of another global war. The Alliance recently destroyed an experimental Communist weapon, and now both sides are blaming each other. Will cooler heads prevail, or is this the start of the next world war? I am Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. A representative from the United Nations has offered to mediate the dispute. A crew from the Space Center is to fly over to Sandy Island and pick up Professor Matchy. For the occasion, the Space Center will be using its new Ambassador aircraft. This aircraft includes all of the latest luxuries, including in-flight snacks and a semi-operational toilet. Valentina will be the pilot for this mission. Other famed Space Center pilots, Jebediah and Didi, were recently involved in the whole situation where the experimental weapon got destroyed. So, in the attempt to maintain peaceable relationships with the Communists, those two were not invited on this mission. Valentina now begins her descent towards Sandy Island Air Base. Please make sure your seatbelt is buckled, your tray table is up, and your seat is in the upright and uncomfortable position. It is 25 degrees Celsius outside. Please wait for the plane to come to a complete stop before undoing your lap belt. Valentina engages the reverse thrust on the engines to help the plane decelerate. Valentina now taxis the plane over towards the terminal, where Professor Matchy is waiting. Supposedly, the professor has formulated a solution that should foster a spirit of unity and cooperation between the Communists and the Alliance. Here's the professor now. She looks like she's ready for her flight. Matchy Kerman is a professor of astronomy. As she enters the plane, she takes her seat and is very excited to share her plan for bringing about peace between the Communist and the Alliance. The Alliance and the Communist are both very interested in space exploration, but so far there's only been one mission sent to another planet. The Alliance was able to perform a flyby of the planet EVE, and the Alliance already has planned its second mission, an orbiter for EVE. If the Communist and Alliance could work together on one of these planetary exploration missions, that may just foster a spirit of cooperation between the two. Perhaps through science and exploration, the Cold War may finally be able to come to an end. Valentina brings the plane down to land at the Communist Space Center. As Valentina taxes the plane, Kerbin history is about to be made. It appears that the Communists are also interested in exploring EVE. After hearing of the Alliance mission to fly by EVE, the Communists began preparing their own mission, an EVE lander. A landing mission would pair very well with an orbiter mission. The two sides have agreed to work together to explore the Purple Planet. The Communists have agreed to share their findings from their landing mission so long as they are able to use the Alliance orbiter as a relay satellite for their own mission. The Alliance Network has agreed to this proposal. Hopefully, this is the first step towards more cooperation. The Communists are putting together a tiny lander that should be able to penetrate EVE's thick atmosphere and land safely on the surface. The craft is to get into low orbit around EVE before attempting its descent. The cruiser section of the craft is not designed for aerobraking. So this stage will need plenty of Delta V to go from low Kerbin orbit out to EVE and then into low EVE orbit. Depending on how successful this mission is, the Communists may consider sending more probes to EVE. The upper stage is safely tucked away into a fairing. The lower stage just needs enough Delta V and thrust to get the craft almost into low orbit. From their desert launch site, the Communists launch their Evenera probe. It's not a very complicated craft, but it should be robust enough to survive entry into EVE's atmosphere. As the craft ascends past 55,000 meters, the fairings are jettisoned. The craft will be placed into a low orbit around Kerbin, around 87 kilometers in altitude. The main engines are used to accelerate the craft over 2,000 meters per second. Then the upper stage will finish the circularization with around 200 meters per second. Now both probes headed for EVE are in orbit around Kerbin. I have reinstalled Kerbal Alarm Clock because the stock one just wasn't working very well for me. Now that the transfer window has arrived, both probes will eject from Kerbin. The goal is to have the Alliance Orbiter arrive first because it has the relay antenna. Evrodite 2 is ejecting Kerbin on the backside of Kerbin's orbit. 
This will cause the craft to slow down relative to Kerbin's orbital velocity, and ultimately lower its solar periapsis down to the height of Eve's orbit. After the Evrodite II probe ejects, the communist Evenira probe sets up its ejection burn. The communist probe uses a similar ejection burn to the one used by the Alliance. If the researchers from both factions are able to work together, then the possibilities are endless. With the combined resources of all of Kerbin, crewed flights to other planets may soon become a real possibility. However, many on both sides remain untrusting of the other. A lot of work is still needed in order to reconcile the differences. Due to Eve's inclined orbit, both probes will need to make mid-course correction burns. The lander is being set up to enter into an equatorial orbit around Eve. The orbiter, on the other hand, needs to be positioned into a polar orbit. I am using the mod Kerbal Alarm Clock to help keep track of both missions and switch between the crafts. The orbiter makes its burn, and it will enter the Eve system from Eve's south pole. The orbiter is equipped with several experiments from the ScanSat mod, but there are more experiments that could be done. If this mission goes well, perhaps a follow-up orbiter will be sent with even more experiments. The Everdite probe approaches the purple planet. At its periapsis, the craft will perform a orbital insertion burn. The orbiter has arrived about 12 days before the communist probe. The relay on the orbiter will provide better network coverage for the system. This will make it easier for the communist probe to perform its maneuvers. The Alliance probe has used up almost all of the fuel in its second stage. Now the second stage is jettisoned, and that will leave only the upper stage, which still has over 3,000 meters per second of delta V for the craft to perform all of its maneuvers. Once the orbiter has finished scanning Eve's surface, it will attempt to do a flyby on Eve's moon Gilly. And depending on how much delta V is left, it may even attempt to get into orbit around Gilly. And with this burn, the orbiter is in a circular orbit around Eve. After completing the Orbit Eve contract, new contracts are available. This includes one to send science data from orbit around Eve, and another to do ScanSat surveys of Eve. Because of the potential for these future contracts, that's why the probe was already equipped with ScanSat equipment. With the orbiter set up, it's time to switch back over to the lander. Kerbal Alarm Clock makes it handy switching between crafts. The lander is able to approach Eve from Eve's night side. Due to the position of Kerbin, this will mean that the probe will have full network coverage as it attempts its insertion burn. In the stock game, comnet coverage is important for maintaining full control over probes. The lander has plenty of delta V. This means that it can get into a very low orbit around Eve. This should make landing just a little easier as it won't be entering Eve's atmosphere with quite as high a velocity. The thick clouds around Eve make it difficult to plan a landing location. But since this is the communist first lander, they'll consider any soft touchdown a success. The goal for this landing is to be somewhere on the daylight side that also has comnet coverage back with Kerbin. Other than that, if it lands in one piece, the mission will be a success. The Evenir probe executes its deorbit burn. The engineers back at Mission Control are giddy with excitement as they hoped to get their very first pictures of the surface of Eve. Although Kerbin astronomers have studied the planet for hundreds of years, its thick clouds means that no one has ever seen its surface. The thick atmosphere of Eve quickly decelerates the craft from over 3,000 meters per second to just over 100 meters per second. The sturdy communist lander has survived the atmosphere of Eve and maintained its orientation. As the craft descends past 3,000 meters, scientists get their first look at the surface of the planet. This section is covered in some kind of liquid, although it's far too hot for it to be water. This planet warrants further observations and studies. But can the factions work together to make that happen, or will something else come up? A small island nation has recently had a change of government. Their leader, Castro Kerman, has aligned himself with the communists. Normally, in the grand scheme of global politics, it wouldn't seem like that big of a deal. Except this island sits just off the southeast coast of the Central Kerbin Alliance Network Space Center. Communist forces have begun setting up a military presence on the island. And while the communists do have a purely scientific rocket program, the rockets they're setting up on this island nation don't appear to be peaceful. Thus begins the Cuban Missile Crisis. I am Echo 3, 
and thanks for joining me on this discussion about the Cold War. I will see you next time.